first got this band, so I made up this jig for cutting circles. And uh, I've been using it pretty well with this quarter inch blade here. Not this quarter inch, unless it's three eighths, I'm not sure. Anyway, it works really, really well. What I do is uh, I'll uh, bring the fence up to against the edge here. And that pretty well keeps this pin right here in line with the leading edge of that blade. At least that's the way it seems to have worked the best. And uh, then we just lock it in place in the right in the right spot. And I'll use these uh, mag switches here. They seem to work pretty good. Okay, that just sort of locks it in place and uh, and then what I'll do is I'll drill a 7 64th inch hole in the center of whatever it is that I want to cut. Anyway, we'll give it a try and see if it'll work with something really large because this this wheel that I'm about to cut on it is going to be the largest thing that I've that I've cut on it. I hope these are not going to be in the road here. Uh, it should make it. So this would be an, an 18 inch. So I think my, uh, if I'm not mistaken, my wheel that I'm going to cut is about 20. Anyway. Well, last night when episode number 17 was uploading, I came back downstairs and I cut out the rest of these inserts. And I also cut off the extra uh, around the outside here and brought it down to about, a, as you can see, a quarter of an inch of the line. And I'm going to see if I can't just, uh, you know, go down to just outside the line now. And this does not have to be very deep. Just deep enough for that little uh, pin that I have in my jig, in my bandsaw jig, to catch. And um, while I'm thinking of it, uh, if I should choose to use a... Uh, um, I'm getting to the age where I can't remember. One of these type. It will... Uh, Brad Point it will have a tendency to not do well in a pilot hole, so I don't need the pilot hole to go all the way through. Maybe a little pilot hole like this wouldn't bother it. But let's say I was to drill a quarter inch hole here, and then I want to enlarge it to three eighths. A brad point three eighths uh, will not follow uh, a quarter inch hole very well. Anyway, we'll just go down just a tiny little bit here. I'm going to cut sections of this video out here because it actually took over four and a half minutes to go all the way around. I went very slowly and I'll explain why here in a minute. Now, you will have noticed I was going extremely slow there. And the reason I was going so slow, because I didn't want to deflect that skinny little blade and have it do the bandsaw drift thing. Anyway, let's see what we've got, because the circle was drawn on the other side. I would say that offhand, it's more or less perfect. Well, my jig worked. Again. And like I say, this is the largest thing that I've done on it, so... Yeah. I don't very often bother to set up for two angles of the same shot here. Maybe I should do it more often. It's kind of fun. We are looking at the outside edge, the edge that the bandsaw just cut. 
And you may recall me talking about the fact that this wasn't genuine Baltic birch and it was going to have voids. Well, here you can see right through and to the other side. And, uh, yeah, that's not a hugely serious thing. I can always uh, reinforce that probably with five-minute epoxy or something. You know, when I get to the place where I'm going to start to glue in the teeth, which I'm kind of dreading, actually. Well, obviously, I'm not going to try and use this one. I'd have a disaster on my hands. It'd probably catch and start spiraling around. And anyway, I wouldn't be able to go very far. So I'm going to have to change. Now this radius that we drilled in here yesterday, um, it's between this one and this one. Uh, this one's just a little bit bigger. But you know, I was thinking I'll go up to this size right here. It's probably about three quarters of an inch without measuring it. That's what it looks like to me. And I was thinking is if I was to go along the edge here and not touch here, well, maybe very, very little to try and get rid of that little tiny lip there. And then I'll be able to increase the radius. I think it'd probably look pretty nice. You know, just, just go in a little bit and then stop as soon as I start touching here. I don't want this to get any thinner than it already is. Now, sometimes this goes really well, and sometimes it doesn't. See if I can do this without having to get my big head in the way here. And it should just unscrew this way. Oh. Okay, maybe if I put this up against something solid here. Okay, now it should work. should work now. Now I don't know if you noticed it, but my table was just a little bit loose there. I guess I never properly tightened it the last time that I tilted it. Okay, it's tight now. Now this machine came with 10 different size spindles. This is actually quite heavy. Okay, I don't want to be getting any dirt in there. And because of the rotation, this thing will tighten itself. It actually turns this way, so that means it's going to want to tighten itself as it works. However, being the cautious guy that I am, I'll just snug it just a little bit here. Doesn't have to be very much. Okay, we're finally ready. No, I'm wrong again. Now we're ready. Well, almost. There. Well, you know, folks, when I said that, it was almost an hour ago. And I thought I'll go upstairs, edit out this video, come back down, do a little sanding, take the video upstairs, and edit out episode number 18 and upload it. Well, like I say, that was an hour ago. That's what I felt like then. Right now, I feel like going and having a shower. So, we'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow.